Facebook Live. Now I'll get the recording started on the conference call. This call is being recorded. Hallelujah, hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It is a day we've never seen before and a day we'll never see again. As always, we believe it is a day. To praise the Lord. Let's get a Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. We thank God for this awesome and wonderful day. Let us go now to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for all of your blessings. We thank you, Lord, that you woke us up this morning, clothed us in our right minds, and gave us a reasonable portion of health and strength. Lord, we lift you up and glorify you and magnify your name because you're God and you're God all by yourself. You're so worthy of the praise. Lord, as we get ready to study your word this morning in Sunday school, we open, ask you to open up our hearts and our minds to your word that we might not just be hearers of your word, that we might be doers of your word. Have your way, dear Heavenly Father. Anoint afresh as only you can. We love you, God. We praise you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Our lesson today, uh, this is, excuse me, this is the, the Guiding Light Ministry International Prayer and Bible Study Conference Call. This is the Sunday School Lesson Edition. And I am your host, Pastor Mark McCoy of New Harvest E Church in Harvest, Alabama. Amen, amen. Our Sunday school lesson for this morning comes from um, the Gospel of John, Gospel of John, the 15th chapter, the Gospel of John, the 15th chapter, and uh, we're going to, to read the text. Our lesson text starts at verse 1 and all the way down to 17. Um, it amazes me sometimes when the Sunday school people put together um, their, their, their Sunday school lesson they go sometimes they give you short verses and other times they give you long verses uh, or text and this this is a very long text so I'm just going to read it I'm reading out of the new King James version of the Bible um, um, let's see Gospel of John start uh, chapter 15 starting at verse 1 I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branches cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I am him bear much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered, and they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask that you what you desire, and it shall be done for you. By this, my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. 
This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no man than this, than to lay down one's life for his friend. You are my friend if you do whatever I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is, is doing, but I have called you friends. For, for all things that I heard from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. These things I command you, that you love one another. Amen, amen. Like I said, this is a very long text. To, to approach for Sunday school and uh, we're going to pray God pray to the God that, that he makes us as efficient as possible as we study this text um, if we're going to put a tag on the text um, the one I'm, I'm looking at is um, just, just how can I say it uh, keep loving uh, keep abiding in God's love, my friend. Keep abiding in Jesus' love, my friend. And, and, and the reason I broke it that way is is, is uh, the word abiding is, 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 is just throughout this whole entire text. It, it's, 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 it's in there some nine times, abiding. What what does abiding mean? Abiding means to stay in it, to to fellowship, to to, to be there, not not just uh, uh 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 to be there in body, mind, and soul. You know, I I I thought about this old song uh, that says, uh, 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 "My body's here with you, but my mind's on the other side of town." No, that's not abiding. Abiding, abiding is your, your, your body's there, your, your mind's there, and your spirit is right there. And, and, and that's, that's what Jesus was talking about. He wants us to abide in him. He wants us to abide in him and stay right there with him every moment. And, 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 and it takes an effort to abide with somebody. It takes an effort to, to abide in the word of God. It takes an effort to abide. And so we have to learn to, to, to abide, abide, just be there in that moment. And so that, that's, 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 that's what permeates throughout this whole text. And so as we look at this text today, we, we're going to look at it from that standpoint, that, that, that we, we have abiding love, that, that, that we are, are um, the words I want to use, uh, we got to keep loving God. We got to keep being loving. And then when we get to the end of the text, he, Jesus takes a course. He says, you are my friend. So, so keep loving my friend that, that keep abiding in God's love. My friend, all of that could be considered a nice little title for this lesson. As you know, I, 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 we have a key verse. Our key verse is, is, is John chapter 15, verses 12 through 13. Listen to this. Uh, my commandment is this. Love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no man than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. Hallelujah. That's John chapter 15, verses 12 through 13. This text, this text, God simply tells us to love others like he has loved us. There is no love in the entire world that is bigger uh, than God's love. 
He sent his only begotten son, Jesus, to die on the cross for, for our sins so that we can get into heaven. Be, and that's why we need to learn to love one another. That love that we give to one another will help another person get into the kingdom of God. It will help them to see that God can forgive us of our sins and God can also forgive them. That's why love is so important. Oh, yeah, yeah, I got another song that jumped in my head. Say, say, you know, Tina Turner, what love got to do with it, got to do with it. Yeah, 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 love has everything to do with it. That is the key. Love is the key. And so now, the key concept that I want us to grab a hold of is that just like God loves us, we need to love each other. And my keys for kids this morning, number one, the reason we know what love is is because God loved us first. Hallelujah. Number two, the love of Jesus helps us trust and obey God's commandments. And number, uh, that was number two. And then number three, the love of Jesus helps us to love others. So now for the deep people, we're going to get down into the, to the, the to the, to the, the deep theology of this lesson. Um, uh, the learning facts is to identify the, the vine, the branches and the fruit and as we look at this text, and then we're going to uh, look at the biblical principles and to explain how, how Christians and believers are, are able to bear much fruit. And then our daily application is to make a list of God's pruning that often occurs in, in all of the believers' lives. Amen. Amen. So we, we're going to dig into this text and amen for everyone coming on Facebook. I, I just love it. Um, um, this is our Sunday school lesson, and we're in John chapter 15. And we're going to be talking about uh, uh, keep loving. Keep loving, my friend. Keep loving, my friend. And so the first part of our lesson, we're going to be looking at the true vine. And then the second part of the lesson, we're going to look at the true friend. Amen. The, the true vine... Uh, starts at verse 1 all the way down to verse 8. And so I'm going to break it down a little bit, and we're going to look at Jesus being the vine, verses 1 through 3. This time I'm going to read it from the New Living Translation. I am the true grapevine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every, every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit and he prunes the branches that do bear fruit so that they will produce even more fruit you have already been pruned and purified by the message i give you so let's just stop right there let's just stop right there now 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 first we got to understand the vine a vine is 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 is, is a plant uh and particularly the grapevine and Oh, I tell you, these songs just keep jumping up in my head. I'm hearing Marvin Gaye, and I'm hearing, hearing uh, 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 what is her name, uh, 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 Gladys Knight and and, and, <laughs> and and the Pips talk about, I heard it through the grapevine. I'm just, songs just jumping in my head this morning. This, 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 this vine, this vine is, 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 is a plant. Uh, the grapevine is a plant that has nice strong roots and it grows up and it's a vine and it grows up on a stick or grow up on a gate and 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 so this this is the vine that 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 Jesus is describing in his illustration as he's talking to his disciples uh on on, on the day before his crucifixion see this is like his last will and testament that he's sharing with them that, that they might understand what they're getting ready to go through, what he's getting ready to go through, all of this. And he's trying to, to encourage them because when trouble comes, when, when the situations come, when you've got to understand that you're connected 
to, to something greater than yourself, that, that you're connected to someone greater than you. There is a higher power. And, and Jesus is saying, look, I need you to understand something. I am the true vine. I am the true great vine. That's what I am. I am the true great vine. But then he says, and my father is the husband man, or my father is the vine dresser. My, my daddy is the gardener. And, and, and being that he is the gardener, he has a certain responsibility for the vine and all the fruit on the vine. And so he says, every branch, every branch, that does not produce fruit, he takes away and every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. So there's two things going on here with the vine dresser. The vine dresser is, 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 is looking at the vine and he's trying to see what parts of the vine are, are, are producing fruit and what parts of the vine are not producing fruit. And those that are not producing fruit, he clips off. He cuts off and, and, and throws them to the side. But then there are other vines that are producing fruit. And those that are producing fruit, he takes them and he clips them a little bit because he wants them to produce more fruit. That's the pruning process. And many people, especially Christians, we get mad and upset when we are being pruned by God. God is pruning us not because we are not producing fruit. Uh, he's pruning us that we might produce more fruit. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why, that's why when you go to one level in God and it looks like you, you think, man, I've arrived. I've gotten to this one level. But, but then all of a sudden stuff starts happening there to, to, to get you more, make you more humble, get rid of some of that pride. Things start happening that you might have to get some unforgiveness out of your system. These are prunings. He's clipping and he's clipping these little things off of you that you might produce more fruit. Oh, hallelujah. And then for the pastors, people who are doing ministry, it, it, just, it, it, it just drives me crazy as a pastor. Just as you, you think you got some good people following you and, and you got some good things going in your ministry and then all of a sudden, people leave. All of a sudden, folks who, who are working hard and doing things, you can't get them to do nothing else for you. And you be going like, God, we were going so good. Why did this have to happen? God said, well, baby, yeah, you were producing some good fruit with them, but I'm pruning them away. Because I want you to produce even more fruit. Oh, hallelujah. I know that just helps somebody. Yeah, yeah, you can't understand why so-and-so had to leave your business. You can't understand why so-and-so had to leave your, your group or, or leave your committee. or leave. Yeah, yeah, because God wants to produce even more fruit in you. Don't, don't be sad. Just, just understand God is trying to produce more fruit in that which he has you to do. So that's Jesus is the vine and, and, and his daddy is the vine dresser. And, and, and daddy God has the ability to prune. And daddy God has the ability to cut off. And we're going to come back to the cut off part in a minute. So let's go to our second part of this, of this uh, the true vine, verses 4 through 8. And this is the conditions for fruit bearing. The conditions for fruit bearing. Jesus is the vine, and now we're going to look at the conditions of the fruit bearing. Listen to the text, verses 4 through 8, and I'm going to read them from the New Living Translation. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. You, for a branch, cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine. You cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. Yes, 
I am the vine and you are the branches and those who remain in me, I in them will produce much fruit. For, for apart from me, you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. And if you remain in me and my word remains in you and you may ask for anything you want and I will and it will be granted. When you produce fruit, you are my true disciples. This brings great joy to my father. Now everywhere in that text where you I read it from the New Living Translation and you hear the word remain in the King James Version. It is abide. I am. He says abide in me and, and I abide in you as the branches cannot bear fruit in and of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither you unless you abide in me. So the conditions are to, 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 to produce fruit Fruit is to abide, to remain, to, to stick with it, to, to be a part, to be connected. Now, 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 many of us today, we, 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 we don't have this concept of, 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 of being uh, vine dressers and, and the grape vine because when we get our grapes, we go to the grocery store. We go to the farmer's market, you know, and, and, and that we go to Whole Foods. We want some organic grapes. And, and so, so we don't see the process of the grape coming off of the vine. But let me put it into words that, that will help us understand it from the day. Uh, you have your cell phone, you have your computer, and, and, and if you don't have a hot spot and your phone isn't connected to the Wi-Fi, you, you're not going to get the, the, the information that you need. And, and so your, your Wi-Fi connection has to be in place. You, you have to be connected to your telephone's 4G in order for you to get the right connection. And, and then there are times where you're driving around and you're going to dead spots where your phone drops your call. Your internet connection is gone because you are not abiding in that web address. You are not abiding in that in that, uh, that uh, telephone tower's uh, sphere of influence. Yeah. You lost your connection. You, you, you drop your call. You, you can't get to your internet to watch your videos or listen to your music. And that's what Jesus is saying. That, that, that if you don't abide in me, if you don't stay, your Wi-Fi connection ain't, ain't complete in me. You, you can't do nothing. Nothing at all. And so he says something. In this sixth verse, he says something that, that oh man, it just, it blows a many of people away. He says in the sixth verse, if anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. See, some in the body of Christ question whether or not this verse is proof for being uh, able to lose one salvation. Oh, mercy. They be looking for proof. Why you can lose your salvation. I, the, the, the context informs us that the branch becomes fruitless only when it is no longer connected to the vine. That branch that abides continually receives nourishment and produces fruit because their sole purpose of the branch is to produce fruit. Therefore, if any fruitless branch is disconnected, is a disconnected branch, if a branch cannot be pruned and cleaned and restored, it will become fruit 
full, if it can, excuse me, if a branch can be pruned, cleaned, and restored, it can produce fruit again. But if it's detached and disconnected, it cannot. So, one cannot lose one's salvation. But the scripture is clear that all branches who have not been connected and are detached are worthy of nothing but the fire. So Christians, I don't care who you are, I don't care who you are as a believer, whether you're a strong believer or a weak believer, it does not matter. You are connected to the vine. And the vine and the vine dresser is going to make sure that you produce the fruit that they desire. Oh, hallelujah. And so don't ever think you have lost your salvation based on this scripture. No, it's some stuff going to get pruned off of you. And yeah, it's going to get thrown to the side. But you still are connected. And will always be connected to the vine. Because you believed in the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You will always be connected. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. And so, the true vine. Jesus being the true vine. His daddy, the vine dresser, the garden. The conditions that we have to deal with to be fruit bearers is to stay connected to the vine. Abide in him. Abide in his word. Abide in him. So what, what does that say? You got to study to show thyself approved. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Read his word. Pray to him. Ask him whatever you need and he'll give it to you. That's that abiding in him. Give him praise. Give him worship. Meditate fast. Do what you need to do. Because you're a part of the vine. You ever seen someone who's walking around with their phone that's a uh, they're trying to find the right place to stand so that their phone will keep the best connection. We make that effort all the time, walking around, okay, if I stand here, if I drive here, you know. And we know <laughs> where the dead spots are when we're traveling. you going through certain areas, you know that the antenna is getting ready to change. So if you're on a phone call, you might pull over to the side of the road to make sure you have your connection. Oh, I'm saying something to you. You got to make sure every moment of the day that you're doing what you're supposed to do to stay connected to the vine that you might get all of the nourishment and all of the things you need to produce good fruit. Oh, hallelujah. And we, 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 you know, we, we, we look at this text and Jesus, when he, when he did, he didn't, he didn't talk about the fruit of the spirit. He was talking to his disciples and he could have talked about the fruit of the spirit right here. And talking about love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, kindness, faith, uh, meekness and self-control. Those are the fruit of the spirit. But what I think he was trying to talk to his disciples about was producing the fruit of seeing folks saved and seeing folks become disciples. And so if you're in the effort, if you're in the job of trying to get people into the kingdom of God, trying to share the word of God, trying to Help them grow stronger in their faith. If you ask God for help, and whatever you need, resources, abilities, anointing, God will give you that, 
and give you even more of it. Because that's the business that the vine dresser is in. He's in the business of producing fruit and producing more fruit. So now let's go to our last part. That's the true vine. Jesus is the vine and the condition of the vine and the fruit bearers. We go to our last part is the true friend. Here again in this section, verses 9 through 17, we start off again with this abiding. Listen to verses 9 through 11 out of the New King James Version. As the Father loved me, I also loved you. Abide in my love. And if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. Oh, hallelujah. Abiding in love. Remaining in love. He says to his disciples and he says to us today. As the Father loved me. I also love you. That's a whole lot of love, y'all. Because there's no doubt in our minds that, that God loved his son, Jesus. He said, this is my son. This is my beloved son. He said that over and over, he loved Jesus. And now Jesus is saying to us the same love that Jesus, I mean that God has for Jesus. He has that love for us. And he's saying to us, how do we show our love back to him? He said, well, show it the same way I showed my love to my father. Jesus showed his love to his father. That he was obedient. Even to the death of the cross. Now God ain't asking us to go and die on no cross. Matter of fact, he don't need us to die on the cross for him. Jesus has already paid it all and all to him we owe. But he's saying, if I was, Jesus is saying, if I was so obedient to my father by dying on the cross, you need to be that obedient to his commandments also. That's what love is about. You can't just say, well, I, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. And then go out and do all kind of hell and ain't following no commandments. That ain't love. That, that's a bunch of mess. You have to study his word so you'll know what right and wrong is. You have to study to show that self-approval, abiding in his word, and then learn how to live a life of love. Oh, if I had some time, I would, I would go into a life of love from 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, but, but we got to move on. Verse 11 is so powerful. He says, these things I have spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. Oh, what joy we have when we follow God's will. The songwriter said it this way, trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. What joy it is when you know that you smack dab in the middle of God's will. That's great joy. That 
that just joy that bubbles on the inside and you can then say this joy I have the world didn't give it to me and the world can't take it away joy unspeakable joy because I'm in the will of God let me say this there for me is no greater joy in the world than to see a lost soul come to saving grace in God. I get excited. I, I'm like the angels. I get to rejoicing and dancing. Because somebody who was lost. Is now found. Somebody who was out of the kingdom of God. Is now in the kingdom of heaven. Oh hallelujah. That's joy. Let me go to my last point so I can close out this lesson. Because I could go on and on with this lesson. The last point is I am a friend of God. And, oh, hallelujah. Israel Horton in the new breed. Israel in the new breed picked up that song few years back. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. And I, I, I love that song because that's what Jesus was telling his disciples the day before his death and that's what he's telling us now. That we are his friend. He's a friend that'll stick closer than any brother, mother, sister, father. He's that kind of friend. He'll never leave us, nor will he ever forsake us. He won't be petty with us. He won't be jealous of us. He won't be envious of us. He won't even have that, that any kind of awe against us. All he wants to do is be that kind of friend that sticks that close. Listen to our text. Verse 12 of John chapter 15. This is my commandments, he says, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no man than to lay down one's life for his friend. You are my friend if you do whatever I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends. For all things that I heard from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. And that your fruit should remain. That whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. These things I command you, that you love one another. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus' disciples, he called them friend. We are God. Jesus' friends. With that friendship, we are to love like he loves. We are to love one another like he loves. He told his disciples early in this same discourse in the 13th chapter of John, you'll be known as my disciples by your love. Do you love like that? Is he your friend? Oh, hallelujah. I am a friend of God. You are a friend of God. Keep walking in your friendship. Show your friendship by trusting him and obeying him and loving one another. With all of that being said, we're going to end this lesson right there. 
as always, I like to give those who are listening an opportunity to come become a friend of God, to give your life to God and actually become one of his children and his friend. So we like to pray the prayer of salvation with you. It's a simple prayer. It simply says that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus died on the cross for your sin and that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. And so we pray with you that prayer. Let us pray. The Heavenly Father, we come confessing and believing in our heart, confessing with our mouth that Jesus died on the cross for our sin and that you, God, raised him from the dead. Lord, we repent of all of our sins. And we ask you to forgive us and come into our heart. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Thank you for being our Savior, our Lord, and our friend. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer and truly believe it in your heart, you are now saved. You are part of the kingdom of God. You are connected to the vine. You are a child of the king and a friend of Jesus. Till next Sunday, be blessed. Thank you for joining us on Facebook and those on the conference call. This is the Guiding Light. Ministry International Prayer and Bible Study Conference called the Sunday School Lesson Edition every Sunday at 9 a.m. Central. We welcome you to come out and be with us. We're getting ready to go into overtime now where we're getting ready to do a little discussion on the conference call. If you want to join us in the overtime discussion, the number is 910 218-0531. Be blessed and always be a blessing. Amen.